the big con and Bitcoin soars and what's up everybody? Welcome aboard. It's Bubba's About Online once again brought to you on uh, this weekend. And of course it is a holiday weekend. Uh, we had uh, Thanksgiving on Thursday, Black Friday on Friday, I guess Black Friday and Friday <laughs> kind of go together. But what's going on everybody? And of course we saw markets make record new highs again and uh, the two week correction is over. <laughs> Quite amazing. Uh, and an, an amazing run in this market. I think that uh, you, you've got a overall big uh, move continuing to play out in dull markets that continue to just grind higher. And remember that markets are predisposed to go higher just by the sheer amount of money flowing in from pension funds, from IRAs every single day. So with the lack of sellers, markets figure to go higher. I think you saw some uh, very interesting things uh, through last week. Uh, we see the commodities are still in the uh, doldrums. The grain space is, uh, is just completely just falling apart and, of course, getting cheaper and cheaper every day. Uh, you've got uh, cattle markets, which you know, are relatively flat but look like they're going to go lower with the exception of fat cattle. And, you know, the hogs were a little bit uh, higher, but of course, significantly off of their highs. Uh, you see uh, a lot of things going on that, that don't make sense. But again, markets aren't supposed to make sense. Okay. This is where many of us get confused by, by what's going on and what's happening. But the first thing that we're looking at here is would be the illusion of growth. Do we really have growth? Is that 3% GDP for real? You know, one of the problems with numbers is the numbers are only as accurate as the people that are giving them to you. And, and so the numbers don't lie themselves, but to the people that give them to you lie. And, and that's always a concern that I have from, <coughs> excuse me, from a, a bookkeeping type standpoint, you know, over the years, there's been many great scams perpetrated from the way that people do bookkeeping. So, and again, I'm not saying that it isn't right. I'm just saying it doesn't seem right. As I look around and I see what's going on, I see a phony growth market that really is not growing. And again, I go back to the thing I think we've talked about the last three weeks is the growth is not coming. The companies are not spending there's no capex or capital expenditures to grow these companies. So what we really have here, as my friend uh, Struther Martin said to Paul Newton, is a failure to communicate, okay? And, you know, this is an issue that continues to weigh on everybody's mind and on the markets. But, of course, the people that report the numbers want to make it look so good. Now, one thing we have to remember is that the economy and the stock market are two separate entities. They are not related in any way, shape, or form. As much as we'd like to make them related, they're really not. All right. The old theory of the stock market being a forward-looking indicator very well may be. But I can't see what the, the, the great things we see coming ahead as being sold to us by our House, by our Congress, by everybody else, and of course by President Trump telling us that, you know, how the stock market is up every day and how great the jobs are. I don't see the, the, the great jobs. That's just me. Now, again, I could be wrong. This is more of an opinion, but I don't see people making more money. I don't see health care coming in to help us out. So I see a lot more problems than I see the overall great start or great look at this economy. I think we should be pretty nervous right now, whether you are left or whether you are right, okay? Whether you like President Trump or you don't like President Trump, I think we should all be pretty nervous right now as to what's going to happen next because it does not look like a great setup to see any growth come in, let alone 3 or 4%, which is what we continue to get promised. We're not seeing new manufacturing. We're not seeing all this new money flow into rebuilding a lot of America. So um, I would be a little bit concerned about all these things. But yet, remember, the stock market doesn't care. 
Now, why doesn't the stock market care? Well, we would talk about the chase for yield. You know, people, investors, funds, they have to put their money to work. It's got to go somewhere. Well, right now, the only thing that, that, that is showing any, re, any, any yield growth is through the stock market. So if you always follow, there's one simple theory to remember. As the chase for yield goes on, the money will flow into the market. So we could go, it, it, as bearish as I can be now, it doesn't mean that I'd be a seller now. What it means is I'm watching and trying to find a spot to be a seller, but I would not be selling it on the way up because you, you, you can't pick the top. What we need is we need a solid footprint to bring back a formation that would indicate that the top of the market is in. For now, you can, we can go higher. And I, and I would assume, as I said last week, I would assume a slow dribble higher, which is what we had last week, a slow dribble higher. And of course, you know, everybody gets enamored by these big numbers, you know, 10 points, it has to be 20 points, 50. At 23,000 or 2,500, these numbers are meaningless. They're no different than when the Dow is 1,000 and it would move 10 points. Again, we, we can't get over-involved in the size of the numbers because percentage-wise, it's not that big of a deal, all right? But I think one of the big things that we are, we are seeing here is the, 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 the growth or the, the actual movement all right, of other asset classes like the Bitcoin, okay? Now, if we look at these cryptocurrencies, they're going bonkers. You realize that, that Bitcoin traded over 9,000 now. So what do we have here? We have a big chase of something else. So we have another asset class that is being chased after. Why? Because it just keeps going up. And of course, investors are like Pavlov's dog. They continue to, to chase it up. It's like the bell ringing. And they're there, they gotta get in, they gotta get in. And they're not gonna get in, but what nobody ever thinks about is how am I gonna get out? Where are the buyers going to be to get me out? Now, I am not, give you a, it's a quick little history. I was, at the beginning, an, an anti-Bitcoin guy, unfortunately. <laughs> I wish I would've bought it, but I didn't. I don't own any. Okay, full disclosure, I own none. I, I'm, I wanna buy some, and I'm gonna buy, not Bitcoin, but I'm gonna buy something that's out there. But in the meantime, you can't worry about what is going on. You see this constant flow in, and, and there seems to be no top right now. Now, again, this is very much of a, a bubble type of trade, but it does not mean that it will not be a very viable currency at some point down the line. I think this is a form of a rebellion, all right, or a revolution. Okay, against, for example, the Federal Reserve. The, 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 the running to Bitcoin, which is totally unregulated by the government, is a reason to believe that that's a lot of people's way of revolting against the system. The system itself is ridiculous. You know, we see the continued manipulation of currencies. We see the continued involvement in the Fed. We see the, the Fed's $5 trillion balance sheet. Uh, we see them continue to whine about inflation. This is why you're seeing a lot more action in the cryptocurrency space. This, this is the, the, the cryptocurrency, the Bitcoin, is becoming, I think, the new gold. Now, again, there'll still be gold investors, and gold has acted extremely well as well. But at the end of the day, this is a place where people are now running because it's more to them, in my mind, as a safety play. Now, certainly, you know, we've seen a big buying spree in Asia. Now, if you buy, you know, let's say uh, $10,000 worth of gold, it's kind of hard to carry that, you know, running around. Whereas if you have $10,000 worth of Bitcoin, it just goes in your little cell phone. So th th these are things that, that make the cryptocurrency very appealing. The transparency of the blockchain makes a lot of this, the, the, this stuff uh, very compelling. So when you look and you see why it's going up, yeah, I think there's a bubble here. I think it's a chase. But at the end of the day, I think it's going to be a very viable option. R remember, we had a bubble in the NASDAQ in you know the 90s. And of course, it collapsed 85%. And then of course, now it's back at all-time new highs. I would not be surprised to see a big solve at Bitcoin here somewhere. 
But I don't think that it's going to be the end. I think that the guys like Jamie Dimon, who call it a fraud, I think he's involved. This is opinion, okay? I think that he's involved somewhere. I know they're involved in the blockchain technology, so that's part of the mix. But I'm sure they've used some, they're buying some. I know that some advisors and family offices are buying Bitcoin and using it as part of the portfolio. I think the only warning you need to take here from the Bitcoin part of this perspective or, or a cryptocurrency side is just don't put everything in it. You know, it's like you start to see these commercials for the IRAs for Bitcoin. I would never put all of my money in any one asset class. So it's not just Bitcoin. It isn't that I'm against Bitcoin. I don't think that I don't think that anybody should ever have more than you know eight to ten to twelve percent of their money in any one investment, whether it be a stock, whether it be gold, whether it be the Bitcoin, whatever. You figure out whatever you want, but it should be a a diversified party part of your portfolio, which I'm seeing many uh, advisor and family offices now start to use. I think that's helping. I think a lot of the fear that we aren't seeing throughout the, the, the markets is being played out within the Bitcoin space, right? This is another place for them to chase yield, but also if you believe in it, then it could be what you would say is a safety play as well. Uh, I think there's a lot of things that are, are very negative, including the tax plan. And I guess the real question here is the, is the deep state, okay, are, are they at work again, all right? Are they squeezing America's wealth. And that's something to think about. You know, if you believe in any of the conspiracy theories about the deep state, which actually I do, um, I think there's a lot of things that we don't know happen, that, that happen, why they happen. I think they are actually, a lot of these things are planned. You know, again, I'm not going to get into the whole conspiracy theory here, but I do think that there is at least some credibility to this deep state and things that go underneath with, you know, the, the Secret Service, with the, uh, with the CIA and all these other things. I mean, again, it wouldn't be really all that far-fetched when you think about it. So I think that is a concern. And again, that's another reason that you start to see some money pull away from the everyday investments and go into something like this Bitcoin. You know, again, is it real? I, I think it's got some legitimate cause of action. I'm, my only concern in the space is that there's too many opening up out of nowhere, and that does lead to some scamming. But I do see now, and again, because others are trading it and because the CME and the CBOE are going to now add contracts that track these, to me, they become automatically real and, and, and better to go. And, and certainly those who have invested in this since the beginning are obviously very wealthy and very happy. And just one bit of advice to those of you who did get in very early and have huge, huge profits. You may want to take just a tad of that profit off the table to make sure. But again, I, I would never, I'm not advocating selling. I do believe that it's a little bit of a bubblish type of chart. It has nothing to do with the product. The chart itself is, is going straight up and is parabolic. Now, I, I think that, you know, a, a, a lot of things that we, we also see is um, we have a big problem in the general economy, and, and we're seeing things we haven't seen in 20 years, okay? We're, we're now seeing the U.S. economy exploding in one side and really collapsing on the other side. And, and, and again, I wonder where the velocity of money is going to come from when there is none. I wonder how we're going to perk up the overall economy with what we're seeing here and with the problems that are arising. Now, as we look forward into the last, I'll put it three, three trading weeks. Now we've got, you know, five weeks left in the year, but the week between Christmas and New Year's is, is nothing. Usually the year would be considered over for a trader on December the 14th, which is the, uh, right after the Fed meeting. That's that week, that's a Thursday, then Friday, then I think it's done. So, is it, can we see another two, three, four percent rally in this market? Sure, you can. There's no reason to believe that you're not going to get the Santa Claus rally. There's no reason to believe that we're not going to see more things push to the upside. Again, there's money that needs to get put into the market. There's there's funds that need to get in, and you have right now no sellers in the market. 
or at least nobody actively selling nor selling in big quantities. We've seen a declining volume whenever the markets are, have been rallying. So I think these are things that we're worried about and that we should be looking after without being into like, what well, can we go forever? Now, we all know that there's going to be a correction and it may very well be in the first quarter, maybe in the second quarter. There's no way to time this out. But there are a lot of concerns, which we will address when we come back from the break. This is Bubba's Bottom Line, Todd Bubba Horwitz. And of course, I want to remind you to check out highschoolinvesting.com. As we have been doing for six years, we have funded and, and we, get, we have no reimbursement from the schools. We have no reimbursement from the state. We have no reimbursement from anybody but me. Anyways, I've got 300 high schools now. I'm trying to get into every high school in the United States of America, and I'm willing to, to fund it, but I do need some help funding it. So if you want to check out patreon.com forward slash Bubba Trading, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Bubba Trading, that would be great. And uh, again, any of those who do, do, we have some special levels where you'll get an autographed copy of my book, also a special webinar. But in the meantime, don't forget to catch the Bubba Show every day at 2 to 3 Eastern at LibertyTalk.fm. I'm going to step out of here for a break and come back with more of Bubba's Bottom Line after the break. Bubba's Bottom Line, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Bubba's Bottom Line, and we're having a good old time on this Thanksgiving weekend. I'm still full, and uh, hey, it is what it is. Football's been a little bit wild, and speaking of football, is the NFL ratings worsen? Where do you stand with the, the National Anthem, and is, it, is that one of the reasons that you're not watching if you're not? Uh, you know, I, I believe that uh, it was done improperly. I don't like the way that it's all been going down. Uh, I, I think we need to respect and show honor to our service people. And I think that if you want to, ha if you have a statement to make, there's plenty of places to make it. And I don't believe that the football field is the place to make it. However, you do have the right to do so. I just think that it's the wrong venue. That's just my, that's just one man's opinion. Okay, I'd like to see more respect. I, I, I think that our service people uh, are, are far too much disrespected, first of all, by the government, let alone by citizens that they are out there defending. All right. We've got the worst VA. We, we've got the worst of everything for the people that put their lives on the line every single day. And that goes to police and fire department as well. I, I don't quite understand it, that the people that are willing to take a bullet for me, not knowing me, get the worst of it. But that's something for obviously for another day. But I think it needs that needs to be rectified. I think that's where some of those money should be going. And that's who we should be worried about. And and I shouldn't be watching on a Thursday, you know, Thanksgiving Day or a Sunday, the uh, people kneeling for the national anthem disrespecting our flag and what the people did for it. I, I do again, they have the right to do it. I can never take away their right, but I do think that it becomes a problem. And that may very well be the, the, the problem with the ratings. But I think another thing we're not talking about about ratings is maybe people don't have as much money. You realize how much it goes to cost to go to a football game. All right. So maybe it, it got part to do with the economy as well. But we'll, we'll, we'll check that out and see later. In the meantime, we see oil continuing to push higher as, as OPEC manipulates the price of oil. And I, I guess that they got I guess they got to the shale producers. Because obviously you would think the shell producers would be knocking it out like crazy selling these futures, but they're not. So they obviously decided that they're going to hold back and, and see what goes on here. You know, I, I don't know. I think it's, I think that's a concern. I, I think the, the other big concern is the, um, is the debt crisis that nobody wants to talk about. I, I don't quite understand it. I, I think this tax cut is a joke. I think that, again, it, it, we're going to talk about this in my commentary, but I think this is the greatest con game ever. Uh, I think this tax cut does nothing for the middle class. I think it continues to wipe away and bring take things away from the middle class. In the meantime, we've got record numbers of credit card defaults and auto loan defaults. And yet, here we are. The markets want to go up. And, and again, this is, again, where we have to think about it. And that's why I say don't get confused with one bit of pocket of bad news. I mean, it will eventually play out, but if you're trying to play it too soon, you could end up losing all your money before you get a chance to capitalize on that opportunity. I, I think that the, the, the whole scam, con, Ponzi scheme being perpetrated by the Federal Reserve, giving you the, the, the continued banter on inflation that is only the hidden tax that helps you and me finance 
the, the deep state. How about that? Now, we're financing it because they want to tax us more. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I think we're already overtaxed to begin with. And, and, and to, to allow the government to grow to these ginormous numbers, that is just, it's just, it's just a total joke. And of course, then when our House and senators don't have to follow the same laws and they've got a slush fund for sexual abuse so they can pay people off, something's wrong in that picture. And, and again, I'm gonna bring this up again this week because it is one thing that bothers me about the president one of his number one promises were to eliminate the, uh, to make term limits. And that has not even come up yet. And I think that is a, another problem. That's for another story for another day, but that is something that does bother me. Uh, but I do also think that one of the things that are, 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 are problems just in general and what's going to really create a problem is all of this artificial, artificial intelligence. Okay, all of this online stuff. Now again, there's nothing wrong with it. It's it's, it's progress, but is artificial intelligence going to knock out the rest of the jobs? Is is that going to be the last invention that we ever have because it does everything from from artificial intelligence? Just something. It's it's a concern. Something you would I would think about. But uh, you know, I, again, I, I'm not a real technology guy to begin with. I, I'd like to go back to you know, no cell phones and no anything. But that's that, that's we're, we ain't going there. All right, uh, but. Let's look at the picture, okay? We've got a lack of real design and growth of small business. So if small business can't grow, that means that good jobs are not going to become available. What that means is that the bigger companies are going to continue to cut down, buy back their stock, and if this repatriation deal comes through where they get the tax cuts and they bring the money back over, does anybody really think they're gonna start putting into other things? I don't really think so. I mean, I think that you could look at some deals that are out there. I think Disney may buy Netflix. Nobody's talking about that, but that's my shot. Apple could buy Netflix. I mean, you could have a, you could have a contraction versus an expansion. And unfortunately, we need an expansion so that we can create more growth, so we can create more jobs. So again, the whole key to the economy is how money flows from one to another. And right now, the way that it doesn't flow is it gets locked up with the wealthy and, and it doesn't help the middle class. And I think that's another big area that we see when we think of this lack of growth and lack of other things that are going on. But until there's something that scares the market, okay? Now again, really, the markets, in my opinion, are waiting for a reason to go lower. We know it's not debt. Look, at we have a bigger debt situation today than we have in 08. We know it's not nuclear war. We know it's not anything right now, all right? Because the markets want to continue to push higher. Now, I think that's probably more of the fear of missing out. You know, I think you hear people, for example, go back to Bitcoin for a minute, that have maybe bought some from the beginning and, you know, made four, five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars on very small investments. So now you've got the people chasing in and pouring in there. You've got the people that were investing in the stock market at the beginning, you know, when it was down in the bottom, which is the right time to get in, and you've got them jumping in now. You get, so you've got this big chase to get yield. You get this big chase to grow wealth. But of course, eventually that has to end as well. And again, we're not worried about it ending forever. And we're not, we're not perma bears. We're not looking for the world to come to an end. But at the end of the day, markets are going to get some sort of sell off. You know, you've seen this in Tulip Mania. The South Sea bubble, the uh, obviously the housing crisis, but right now the markets are in a spot that they are searching for a reason to go down. Now, whatever that reason is, nobody knows right now. When it will come, nobody knows. But I always hate this one. But back in in, in uh, September 11th of 2001, the markets were in a very similar position of wanting to go lower, but dull markets drift higher. So what we saw was, unfortunately, obviously the saddest day in American history was the terrorist attack. But now, again, markets are waiting for something, and it, obviously there's no telling what it's going to be. We know it's not economic. We know it's not debt-related. We know it's not uh, North Korea-related. But what it will be, that's the interesting question. What will that one item be? And when it does show up, the markets will sell off. But, of course, what that will really do 
and if the, the Fed would stay away from it and let the system take its hold, then it would destroy a few companies, which is going to happen anyways, and then it would bring back stronger and then bring back growth. And that is the key thing we're missing because without the growth, we can't get the good health care plan. We can't get all the things that we need to let everybody live and then let the rich get richer, which is fine. I mean, they're there when you need them, but also to let the middle class become strong again. I think that's one of the biggest problems, which will also come in my commentary uh, because we're going to talk about the greatest con game ever in American history as well. This is Bubba's Bottom Line. I am Todd Bubba Horowitz. I'm going to step out of here for a break, and I'm going to come back with my commentary on this Thanksgiving weekend, and this is uh, Bubba's Bottom Line. Make sure you check out my highschoolinvesting.com profile and, and what we're doing there. Looking for some help, want to continue to grow it. Patreon.com forward slash Bubba Trading is where you go for it. In the meantime, don't forget to get the Bubba Show every single day, 2 to 3 Eastern at libertytalk.fm. Bubba's bottom line, we're going to step out of here for a break. We'll be right back with more of my opinion after the break. Bubba's bottom line. Welcome back to Bubba's bottom line. Todd Bubba Horowitz with you. And of course, it's always great to spend time and, and be able to voice it. That's the greatest thing about being an American is I get to go ahead and voice my opinion. And I think that's the, I thank my veterans. I thank everybody for that who has made it possible for me to do these things. But right now, I, I'm very concerned. I believe that we are in the, the greatest con game ever. We've got the long con and the short con going on. And, it, and it's being perpetrated first by the House and the Senate with this ridiculous tax plan that has zero value, in my opinion. Uh, I, I think that, again, I said this last week, I think this is something that, unfortunately, Donald Trump is selling for because he needs a victory. But I, I believe this, this whole battle back and forth of what's in it has really got nothing for it. They did not address the debt issue. So what's going to happen is the debt is going to continue to grow. Do you think that's a good thing? And the answer is no, it's absolutely the worst. Instead of settling down the debt and making it right, it's going to, it, it's going to penalize small business all right, under the guise that it's good for you. And that, that's another thing that really gets to me because as much hatred as the left and the right show for each other publicly, I believe that privately they're sitting there figuring out how they're going to screw us anyways. I think that's one of the biggest problems, which is why we need to get back to term limits and not let these people be career politicians. But I think there's more to the, 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 the greater con game, and I go that to the Fed, the biggest Ponzi scheme ever run, because it's legal, obviously. But here we continue to see new money printed or, or made for, to satisfy the old debt. Yet they're worried about inflation, which the only reason they need inflation is so that you and I, the middle class, can fund and pay back that $5 trillion that they created out of thin air, which goes back to the fractional banking and all the other things that go with this ability to create money from nowhere, all right? Which is one reason you're seeing these alternative currencies, especially the cryptos, go bananas because you've got all of these guys telling you of, of how bad these things are, and yet... Here we are sitting here watching and, and not one word about how to reduce the debt that we've created. Where are all these car loans going to go? Where are all these student loans going to go when this system has to have a meltdown again? We've already gotten back into a, a lot of no doc uh, loans for houses, no money down. But you've got the likes of Jamie Dimon, Goldman Sachs, that were, were telling you that the Bitcoin and all these other things were frauds. Right now, is it? Do they really believe that, or are they bringing that stuff up because they wanted to be buyers of those things? I don't know the answer to that, but I would. My, my guess is is betting that they own them. My guess is that we can get inside their portfolios, they own them. But we've got so many sides trying to convince us what's going on, and trying to play either the short con or the long con, bringing us into these things. And again, anytime I see. A, 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 a senator or a, a member of the House smiling and telling me on national TV what a great job they've done for me, I'm worried. And I'm really worried right now because all this joy and jubilation that they're expressing to me is just another way that they, they've got a, a way to get more of my cash away from me. And, 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 and a tax plan is supposed to put more money in my pocket to let me go out and spend more versus 
have to worry less, worry more. And I think I, I think I'm more worried now, especially when they're they're destroying the ability for small business to succeed. It's bad enough that small business in the beginning doesn't have the same buying power as big business, but that's part of business, right? You can buy more, you can get cheaper pricing. But now you want to pay us to pay more taxes than big business, our big business competitors, again, creating an unfair advantage. So do you think that this is not somewhat of a con game? And of course, if you're a conspiracy theorist, you can go back to you know, the, the destruction of wealth created by the Federal Reserve. Again, you can go back to the creature from Jekyll Island. There's a lot of things out there that don't make a lot of sense. But I know that the tax plan is ugly. I know that it does no benefit, in my opinion. I know that we see a sudden surge in what I would consider a revolt, which is into the buying of the Bitcoin. I think that the overall habits of the wanting to get inflation from the Fed is ridiculous. I think the lack of free markets and the pushing up of interest rates is just one big con game that is preventing the United States of America to get to the next step and get out of this malaise and get away from this ridiculous economy that is not helping anybody. And instead of going forward, we're running in space in a sandbox. And to me, that's a bigger problem. And that's why a lot of these things need to be changed. But you're starting to see some things happen, but we need to get everything settled and end the con game the long and the short con, and the Ponzi scheme so that we can actually now move forward. It's been 10 years. It's a lot longer. The schemes are going on longer, but it's been 10 years since the last collapse. And we've really gone nowhere, if you think about it. That's it for today. I hope everybody had a great holiday weekend. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy holidays. And we'll see you back here uh, next week. Same time, same station. This is Bubba's Bottom Line, Todd Bubba Horowitz. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you later.